Music, money, and marriage. Those are the three things tying Saint to Tristan. Their marriage has never been about love, and for quite some time, Saint has been okay with that. He's loved his music more than anything and had no desire for a healthy, loving, romantic relationship or children. Just when Saint believes he's going to spend the rest of his life married to a woman that drives him crazy, Tristan betrays him in one of the worst ways possible, forcing Saint to have to choose between marriage to her and his music or divorcing his freedom, even if that means his music career will temporarily be over. After losing her best friend to cancer, Harmony promises to never let a relationship end on bad terms. Fast forward several years later, and Harmony finds herself facing that same battle, this time with the man she loves. Harmony's relationship with her fiancé, Keith, has been suffering for months. Between Keith's failing health and random bouts with depression, he leaves little room for Harmony to be a priority in their partnership. As Harmony struggles between putting herself first and being a good partner, Keith's actions make the choice for her, ending their relationship in the process. When Saint and Harmony meet, neither are in the market for love or even lust. The harder they try to stay away from each other, the more fate pulls them together. Like magnets, their bodies, hearts, and minds connect and become one. Just when the pair believe that they are up for their happily ever after, ex-partners and an unfair hand dealt by life threatens to rip them apart. Will love become the sweetest melody Mr. Musician has ever played? Or will his failed marriage cause him to close his heart for good, making him a one-hit love wonder? Hello, my beautiful people, and welcome back to the Bibliophiles Bookcase. I am your host, Erica the Bibliophile, and we are here for for part five, excuse me, of the Mr. Series, Mr. Musician. Now, last yeah, now that I've reread and gone over this book, while I love Mr. Musician, Mr. Concierge, that's that's my favorite. Um, but let's hop right into the story. So last week, you know, we met Cartier and Cartier's brother, Saint. So this is his story. Saint has been married to his manager by the name of Tristan for a while and but it's never been a marriage of love she's his manager like i said and she she did him dirty she really did him dirty but let's before we even get into that so their marriage is not one of love because he told her from the beginning like you know i do what i do i'm not looking for love i'm not looking to have kids none of that and she acted as if she understood that and she was like the friend on the side until she basically like worked her way into being his woman and eventually becoming his wife now where she did him dirty is she had him sign a contract and you know he trusted her because like i said she was his friend and he thought that she would have his best interest at heart and with that he signed whatever she told him to sign. Now, in this contract, though, she puts that if he divorces her, like if their marriage ends in divorce, he would not own any rights to his music and he would not be able to perform and go make music with anybody else or like on his own 10 years after the divorce. So basically he's stuck with her and i'm just like what let's stop right there we stopping right there already why would you want to be in a relationship where you have to force somebody to be with you it's never going to turn out right especially and even if you thought you were doing this like oh i can be by his side i can show him that i'm down and eventually he'll appreciate me it's like when he found out what you did, girl, it, it pulled him away from you even more. So why would you force him to stay in this situation? And she has now formed resentment against him as if it's his fault. Now, I mentioned this before and I never went into detail on what I meant because I brought up um, 
what was that? Siobhan Latrice, Boss Chicks, the third part. It's all, um, I had brought it up in another review to make my point and I never went back to it, but I'm finna do it here because I feel like these are two different things. Like he told her from the get go, like, this is it, ain't gonna be nothing else. And basically he stuck to what he said now where i was going trying to compare the last book in this situation so boss chicks is um uh, i forgot what was his name Ke- was it keon i believe it was keon he kept sleeping with his baby mom he kept doubling back so it's like even though you was talking to her crazy you were still having sex with her like saint told her point blank period like you're never getting this type of relationship from me and he stuck to that. And then especially when he found out what she did, it's like, bitch, I hate you even more. Not, not to say that he hated her before, but you know what I mean? Like, it's really a rap now. And so she she just won't let him go. Basically holding on to him. And now she's spiteful. But it's like, you did this to yourself and you punishing him for it. Just because you couldn't make him be what you wanted him to be. And so even though he's married, Saint has a girlfriend. Her name is Whitney. And it's like he told Whitney what was going on. Like she understood what it was. And after he got off the road or like it was a break in him torn or something. Anyway, you know, he meet up with his girlfriend. And they have unprotected sex. You know, like this is a quote unquote real relationship because he's always thought about you know the more trish didn't get on his nerves he's like fuck it i'm just gonna deal with the consequences because i don't know how much longer i'm gonna be tied to her but anyway him and whitney have sex i think he leaves like goes to do some business or whatever and then whitney whitney calls him over like you know can you come over i need to see you do whatever when he comes over she like slapped the shit out of him because it's like what's the one thing i asked you not to do and that was to bring her back anything because you know they're having unprotected sex because she was of the belief that it was just them two and so when she finds out that he gave her something like she goes off and he's like um he had sex with tristan on her birthday i think he said like she got him drunk and for her birthday they had sex that one time and so that was it but whitney she was like i'm not trying to hear that i don't care like first of all you having sex with her when you said it wasn't what it was and she's just like you know no i'm not doing this and i gotta go get this taken care of no it's a wrap it's over and he tries to plead his case but he sees that she's serious like no i can't do this with you so that makes him hate tristan even more because it's just like i can't remember for certain but it's just like i think he said he like passed out and when he woke up she was on top of him like something like that where it was just real drunk it was her birthday it was a one-time thing and it never happened again and so of course he goes to tristan cussing her out like why would you do that and she was having sex with three different men on the side and she just threw that out there like it was just all gravy and it's like girl you so fucking trifling um not the fact that she's having sex with three men because it's like girl that's your right you do what you want um but the fact that you're doing it unprotected and you bring it back diseases that's the trifling part um so and I shouldn't even say that because you don't want to put a, a stigma on STDs because there's plenty of people who, quote unquote, did the right thing and still ended up with a disease. So whatever, because uh, <laughs> I'm like, I, I ain't trying to shame nobody, but it's just like, girl, you, but Tristan, no, nah, fuck all that. Because the way Tristan moving, it feels like she was doing it on purpose. Oh, no, nah, fuck her. Um, but anybody in real life, I don't want y'all to feel that way. Like I'm coming for y'all, but no. Nah. Tristan fuck Tristan um so he's like basically that's it that's the last straw and Tristan has been scheduling him doing performance like back to back to back like he literally has no breaks until he's doing a performance and it's like as soon as the performance is over 
he collapsed on stage. So, you know, they rush him to the hospital, like, you dehydrated, you need to relax. That was the last straw for him. So he files for a divorce and he gets it done quickly. He, uh, I think he blocked her from his phone so she don't have no access to him. He's like, I fuck it. I don't care no more, man. She can have it. She can do whatever she want. It's a wrap. And so she calling everybody, like trying to get in contact with him. He's like, nah, forget it. And when he comes back to Memphis, it's like, what am I going to do? Because he had money saved up, but it's like now whatever money he was making from his music, he's not making that anymore. He just has what he has saved. And so <clears throat> he goes to work at the library because I, I still not have, I still not have, I still haven't done part one of the whole Mr. Series because Khalil owned this like elusive or exclusive is the word i'm looking for excuse me library that holds like very valuable old books and it means something but he handed that off to harmony and harmony is our lead female character now her story is while she's running the library she has a fiance who is battling cancer and his name is keith so, you know, Keith, he doesn't really want to go out anywhere. He doesn't really want to do anything. So she's the same way. She's in the house with him, you know, trying to be with him because that's her fiance. But he don't want, like I said, he don't want to do nothing. But then when he does get like the little spouse of energy, he's going to hang out with his friends. He's not inviting her or his cousins, like his family and all that type of stuff. But he don't invite her and he don't want to do nothing with her because when she's like, hey, let's go out. He's like, no, nah, I'm just going to stay at home or I'm going to such and such house and we finna hang out, we'll do whatever. To where it comes to a head where she tells him, how is it that you want to hang out with your family, but you don't ever want to hang out with me? It's like I get the, not the cancer, but you know, like maybe throwing up not taking the best care of himself, like leaving stuff everywhere. Like I get this version of you, but when you finally feel good and feel like you can do some stuff, you want to go out with your family and you don't invite me. And she's like, you know, I'm supposed to be your fiance. I'm supposed to be your friend. And he tells her, you know, you're not my friend. You don't feel like a friend. Like basically I'm depressed around you, but when I get around them, they don't remind me that I have this disease. And it's like, what? And they're not even staying in the same bedroom. they sleeping in two separate bedrooms. And so she's still trying to make it work. I will give Harmony that. She's still trying to make it work. But he comes home one day to say that he's moving to... Where did he move to? Was it D.C.? I believe he moved to D.C. So he moved out of town. He's like, you know, this ain't really working for me so i'm just gonna go ahead and move out so she's like well if you leaving then this relationship is over with like ain't no one foot in one foot out the door type of situation so if that's what you want to do then you go ahead and he and like i said he was trying to have one foot in one foot out because it's just like you know no nah, um i still want to see where this can go and she's like you told me i'm not your friend you told me that basically I'm the reason why you're depressed. You're depressed around me, but you cool around your family and your friends. So no, this relationship is over with. You know, go, I wish you the best and let that be that. So he leaves and now here comes Saint wanting to volunteer at volunteer slash work at the library because he really don't have to work, but it's like he needs something to occupy his mind. Now he's, first of all, he's from the city. So everybody knows who he is and he's a big time superstar. So she's like, if you come to work here, you know, that's just going to cause a lot of people coming here that ain't trying to check out no books, ain't really looking for nothing, you know, like all that type of stuff. Like, so do you really want to work here? And then plus they flirting this and attraction. So it's just like, I don't know, but you know, uh, I think Khalil puts in a good word for him. Like, you know, he's he's good people. Let him work there. And 
what is it? At some point, Saint, like, he comes to her house. They're kicking it at her house with his, uh, not his, sorry, her brothers and, um, and her sister. And it's just a good vibe. I love, oh my God, I don't know what it is, which it shouldn't be a surprising relationship, but I love when couples just vibe, like, just chilling at that. Like, they was chilling, smoking, playing cards, playing the video game. Like, everybody just chilling together, having a good time. That's just so dope to me. So it's just like, that's how they got to know each other better. But also with him being who he is, he took her to a couple places. Like, girl, I could fly you out. This nothing. Boom, bam. Whatever, whatever. Um, But he gets a, a phone call. Well, uh, Tristan had been reaching out to other people, like calling, crying. Like, I really need to talk to him. Please have him get in contact with me whoop do whatever so he flies back to i believe it's la like okay what is it um she's pregnant and he's like you pregnant and she's like i don't know if it's yours or one of the three other guys that i slept with that one night whatever and she also tells him like but i don't want this baby and he's like what so you called me to tell me that there's a possibility that you might have my baby, but you're not keeping it. So why did you call and tell me? Which is true. I'm sorry. That's just how I feel. Because it's like, if you're not going to keep it, why are you telling me about it? Because it's like, at the end of the day, it's her body. So she has the choice. But it's like, if my baby not going to be here, I kind of, I'm of the mindset, I'd rather not know about it. Because especially with how spiteful Tristan is, it feels, it's another thing just to stab him in the heart with. And so, uh, she, uh, what was it? It was, she gave him syphilis and he passed it on to Whitney, but, um, I guess it was, uh, some medicine that could clear it up. And she said, like, when you gave that second dose to Whitney instead of me, she like, it, she felt the way about it even more like you care more about her than you do about me but it's like but you knew that tristan this is not new news to you sweetheart so and he said that too he was like so basically this was just another way for you to get back at me to tell me that you might have my baby but we won't know because you're going to get rid of it anyway and she's like you know with her having syphilis the baby might not make it anyway or it's gonna have complications so it's just like no and it's another thing of this may be your baby but it may not be because she slept with three other people at the same time and he's like well can't we get a dna test right now and I think she didn't want to do it because she was like, no, that's a possibility that it could hurt the baby. And he's like, well, just have the baby. And if it's mine, then give it to me. And she's like, but what if it's not yours? Then I'm stuck with a child that I do not want? No. But they go to the doctor. The doctor reveals like there's a slight chance that if she do all of this, the baby could be perfectly fine. But she just didn't want to go through with it. So he leaves and when he goes back to memphis harmony can tell something is going on she's like you know what's the matter what's going on and i forgot she was an author uh harmony is an author and he like had talked about her books online so all his fans went and like ran her books up she was number one on amazon you know people just buy her books all over so uh And she really didn't have to run the library. Like, the library, she had people in place, like managers and stuff like that. She didn't have to be there. It's like, you own it. You you can focus more on your writing. So while she was focusing on her writing, he was doing the music thing just to, like, keep his craft going. And when he came back and she saw how sad he was, because it's just, like, the possibility of a baby that I really like I'm never gonna know so that messed with him and then plus he still can't do his music thing so one day they're on a date and his phone just keep going off like he keeps silencing but he keep going off so he finally answered and it's 
a artist on Tristan's label who was saying like, you know, people are threatening to walk out, but the way she did her contract, like basically it's the same contract for everybody. Like you can't release music for the next 10 years and you ain't going to be making no money off your old stuff. But the way she did the contract, she did it for each person as a solo artist. So if they did leave and got together like as a group and released music under a group name, then technically there's nothing that she could do to them. And so that was the route that people were going and that opened St. Eyes because it's like he could do that as well. If he formed a group with somebody and just released music under that group name, then she wouldn't be able to touch him or sue him or anything like that. And so when they he got off the phone, he told Harmony, and she was like, you know, that's a great idea, something to think about, we'll do whatever. But Harmony then flew to see Tristan, and she's like, I have a proposition for you. And of, for, of course, Tristan, like, she's trying to play hardball, thinking she's tough, and she like, girl... Harmony basically was like, girl, you can have all that. I'm not even here for that. She's like, I love this man. He loved me too. I know for a fact that he loves me. It ain't like what y'all had going on. You know, you bitter and I'm sorry. There's nothing I can do about that. But this is my proposition. I have these books that are worth like over either a hundred mil or 200. I think it's a hundred mil. And it's just like, um, you can have these if you promise or if you agree to release saint from his contract and you know you no longer contact him you have nothing to do with him basically set him free and at first tristan was like no like why would i do that and if what you say is true because harmony brought like the paperwork to um so that is the books are authentic she's like I need some time to think about this. Harmony says, no, either you agree to this right now or the deal is off. And she agrees to it. And, you know, Harmony flies back home like, and tells Tristan, I have a surprise for you. And she shows him that he has the right to all his masters and all that type of stuff. He's like, what the fuck did you do? And she's like, what do you mean? He's like, exactly what I said. What the fuck did you do to make this happen? And when he sees that she's releasing like a few of the books he's like no there's no way i can let you do this she's like i already did it because i love you and i want you free from this woman so you know basically bam it's over with it's done and so he comes back like her birthday was i forgot was it before or was it after Anyway, but for her birthday, because she turned 33. So for 33 months, he had made plans for them to travel a new place every month. Like for the next 33 months, I mean. And he's like, you know, this is just places I want to take you. But also in between that, we're going to be going on other vacations if you want to. I just want to experience this with you. And it's like, <sighs> you're gonna make me cry but this is so cute i loved it it was like he finally found a woman who he could be in love with because he had that conversation with her too like you know i'm that's not where i came from i don't know nothing about love that's not, i don't know that lifestyle <laughs> why was she kind of like that anyway that's, that's all i got they have their happily ever after and i love that for them so i hope you guys enjoyed this review i hope to see you back next episode peace and blessings my beautiful people i don't know that lifestyle like shikana you crying over gucci girl gucci